fellow journalists, people who love speaking for a living, I'm Jamboni. Uh, first of all, I bring you my the regrets of my chairman, Lina Skaikai, and uh, a few others of the team, as you'd expect. We are fairly close to the election. There's a lot of things that are going on, um, not just the election itself, but as I very well know, there's presidential debates that may or may not happen. There's uh, preparations that need to be made in that regard. And so there's quite a number of meetings and preparations going on this morning, which means we have distributed our people right across. Uh, but they're fairly well represented, uh, as the introductions did, um, from people from all sorts of uh, media houses, people who have been very busy in the past few weeks and months preparing for what's about to come. I need to remind anyone, um, certainly not members of the Red Cross and certainly not members of the media, that we are two and a half weeks away um, from a very crucial election. Uh, the thing with Kenya is that every single election that comes is the most important election since the last one. So all the way from 1963 has been the most important election. So it's the most important election you're facing um, in two and a half weeks on the 8th of August. Uh, Kenyans shall be going to the polls. Depending on how that goes and the outcome of that, we might go back to the polls two weeks later, depending on uh, how we decide to make our choices. But it's been an extremely busy time um, for everyone. So there's just a few things perhaps that um, I just may want to put across. Um, most of them are obvious to us, but it doesn't hurt to actually state them again. The first one is, we're very, very close to the election. It sounds redundant to say so, but people sometimes forget. Um, I've seen conversations going on, people saying this election really on. It's been quieter than normal. It's been, uh, we haven't heard the noise that usually accompanies elections. Yes, it's coming. Um, and it's as busy as it has ever been. If you think about the number of posts that people are running for all the way from the presidency to the MCAs, um, that election is coming. The fact of how perhaps quiet it has been is a reflection of how Kenya has changed. Um, and primarily those changes have been at representative level, meaning that you now have people paying closer attention to what's going on on ground level. So the people that are representing us at county level MCAs um, and governors especially. Lots of noise going on there and then lots of noise at the top as you'd expect from the presidential level perhaps a bit quieter um, at MP level and at senator level and a bit more noise at governor level. So that's the first thing. So the relative lack of noise especially as compared to previous years should not um, lead us into any sense of complacency about how busy an election period it will be and especially what we've heard in terms of preparedness for anything that may happen um, as an untoward result of that election. The second thing um, is the fact that the media and the Red Cross tend to be very, very similar institutions when it comes to things of this nature. If you think about whenever there's problems, um, if right now we were to hear a very loud um, bang um, and we were to establish that that is actually an explosion of some kind everyone in this city um, five million people would be running away from that but the people in this room would all be running towards that um, we'll all be going to the Red Cross um, in their usual nature and in their mandate would be going to make sure that whatever it is that have happened the people around there are safe and secure the media would be carrying the curiosity of all the Kenyans to ensure that we actually know what happened, who it happened to, uh, the five, what they call the five W's and the H um, that the media concentrates on. So <clears throat> if there's anything that was to happen towards um, and toward at the election period, the three groups you'd expect to be running towards whatever it is that is happening would be the security services and then the two groups represented here, which is the media and the Red Cross. So the mandate is a serious one. Um, it's not one that any of us takes lightly. Um, but at the same time, we must remember that we are Kenyans as well. So sometimes people tend to think that Abbas Bullet is heartless. You know, he'll be going where there's blood flowing. He'll be going to where people are um, starving. He'll be going to where people are being stricken by cholera. But it's not about heartlessness. It's the fact that you actually have signed up to a fairly serious mandate on behalf of the people um, of Kenya to say that we shall be there when these things happen. And it's the same mandate that the media 
has signed up for. Um, and we must remember again that we're not just Kenyans, we're also human beings. So we are families, we have things like that. So sometimes you're woken up in the middle of the night and you're told there's this going on. Um, please pack a bag and prepare to go off to look for these trouble spots. And you're leaving your loved ones, they don't know what's going on, you don't know what's going on. So these are the sort of things that um, we like keeping in mind. The second thing that, um, or the third thing, I'm not, sure, I'm not counting, but uh, the other thing that we have in common uh, in terms of the media and the Red Cross is either, and here I need to be careful, it's either perception or the reality of neutrality. You know, um, there's a certain expectation, although we are not elected officials, none of us here are elected officials um, by the broader public of the Republic of Kenya, but there's a certain expectation that they have of us that we shall be neutral. They expect that if you go off into an area to cover uh, the election, not only are you neutral in the broader sense, so in as much as you may come from Western Kenya and you're going to cover an election in um, Western Kenya, you'll largely be broadly, or largely broadly, but broadly be neutral to that, but also be neutral in the specific regard. So I go and cover an election in um, Dagoretti South, which is where I vote, and I don't care who um, is being elected in terms of my work. So whether it's this candidate or that candidate, this party or that party, the expectation that people have of us is that we shall be neutral. The expectation that people have of the Red Cross is that when you go into an area um, to fulfill your mandate, is that you will go there with your blinders on. That you will go there, do your work, and come out of there, regardless of what happens, regardless of what you think about the origin of the situation, the actors in that particular situation. And it can be a very difficult mandate to fulfill. Like I said, and I'll remind us again, we are all human beings, we're all Kenyans, we're all members of a particular society, family and the like. You may see something that um, does not fill your heart with gladness and joy, but sometimes you have to set that aside and say, you know what, I'm here to fulfill the job that I'm doing, and I better do it um, well. Uh, and so that's something, again, um, to my colleagues. I don't think I need to remind members of the Red Cross, but to my colleagues in the media. Um, it's something that we need to take extremely um, seriously. The other one is a willingness to speak the truth, even when that truth is inconvenient. So there's a lot going on um, in Kenya. Um, I was reading the international media the other day and they said this is a fiercely competitive election. Um, unlike many elections you have in Africa where the outcome is predetermined, um, there are no surprises. In Kenya there can be surprises at any level. Forget the presidential one. You saw during the nomination process how many sure bets um, were kicked out at that level. Um, if you had put any money on some of the people who were expected to go through the political party uh, process, Many of them got out, um, were voted out by the electorate. The same is certain to happen um, on August the 8th. We don't know what levels people will be voted out at. It could be anything from the presidential level, we may have a new president, all the way down to MCA level. Um, these are all the people that we are voting for. But with that in mind, um, again, we have a mandate as members of the media, you have a mandate as members of the Kenya Red Cross, to actually speak the truth, even when that truth is inconvenient. Because sometimes, and I need not remind you again, all of us have been um, in the heart of the beast, that you may be the only presence in a particular place. Um, growing up in the Moi years, I'm sorry to you younger ones who don't remember Moi, but growing up in the Moi years, we tended to think that the government was everywhere. The government had ears everywhere. Um, those of us that are old enough remember whispering at home when you're saying something that wasn't quite um, supposed to be heard by the powers that be. So I think many of us still have that mentality. You know what? If something happens, if there's a ballot being stuffed, if there's someone who's um, being beaten up, killed, or the like, that someone will know about it. But you might find that you're the only witness to that. And the mandate that, again, I keep on using the word mandate because that's what we have, is that we shall say the truth even when that truth is inconvenient to certain people or to certain interests or to certain occasions and certain um, uh, circumstances. And it's not, again, an easy one to carry because you may say that truth and it's got certain personal effects on you. You may feel that you may want to keep this quiet, but it does affect the eventual outcome of what you want to accomplish. So that difficult burden to carry, which is saying the truth, 
I remember a few years ago when Hunger was talking the land, um, we go there and the only people who can actually come out and say that there's hunger going on were the Red Cross um, and um, on occasion the media. Whereas everyone else, because of whatever reason, was trying to say no, there was no hunger. We have seen the same happening with regard to this current cholera outbreak. It's been very, very inconvenient in very many ways. Um, the places it struck were not the most convenient places to be struck by cholera at this time. Um, the people who were struck by this illness were not necessarily the most convenient people to be struck by that illness. And we can still see, um, yesterday someone sent me an SMS that they were being sent by the Ministry of Health that said, uh, we are sorry that, well, if you attended the trade week that happened at the KICC last week, um, we'd just like to alert you um, and we are sorry that there's still a bit of a problem because of food poisoning um, in that. And so if you feel symptoms, please go and get checked out, etc., etc., etc. There's still an inconvenience to telling that truth. But we don't have that luxury in this room. We don't have the luxury of saying it's food, co uh, food poisoning when it is cholera because the two have to be treated entirely differently. So when this election comes, um, again, we hope that everything happens, but we don't live in a world of hope. We cannot live in a world of, uh, of uh, wishful thinking. But that mandate, that burden, that responsibility that we carry as the two groups represented in this room are serious ones. We must acknowledge that we have them. Kenyans have a certain expectation of us that happens. And the last one, actually, as I finish, um, is social media. So we sit here, we're all very responsible journalists, we all work for very responsible um, institutions and outlets. Uh, but social media goes on, a WhatsApp rumor starts, it circulates. Um, we know that you, Media House, has been doing this, you know your owner is aligned to this party, you know Abbas Goulet wanted to run for office but he failed and so therefore he's acting in this regard, or any other of his officials and officers. Those things will happen, we need to know about them, we need to acknowledge them, we need to be prepared for them. But the key thing, and as I wind up, again, things I don't need to remind you but need uh, to be said, is that we're all Kenyans, we all taking part in this process because we chose to be a democratic country. We chose that we shall choose the leaders who represent us. So it should be an easy period to get through, but as we know in this country, some of the things that we expect may not necessarily happen. But what we can guarantee as a media fraternity, and I'll dare say speak for the Red Cross as well, is that we shall do our job due to the best of our ability and to make sure that the mandate which the Kenyan people have entrusted us with shall be carried out and shall be carried out well. Thank you.